This is a brunch pre-Oscars mini podcast to contain spoilers, but we can't imagine you care. If you haven't seen the movie and you're afraid of spoilers, there's no way you would logically seek out a podcast about the movie. Let us begin. Avatar, Way of Water. Is that movie James Cameron made? It's the sequel to 2009's Avatar <laughs> and catches up with Jake Sully, his family, and that pesky RDA. It is the highest grossing film of 2022 and is up for four Academy Awards, Best Picture, Best Production Design, Best Visual Effects, Best Sound. Avatar, The Way of Water is a 76 on Rotten Tomatoes and has a runtime of three hours and 12 minutes, making it, I think, got to be the longest of the Best Picture. No, I, I would quit. hope Tarantino so. didn't make a movie this <laughs> yeah. year. I don't think so. Uh let me tell you, this movie ain't that bad. Yeah, I, I'm not giving it a Best Picture Oscar. It's too long, but we knew it was going to be too long. They had leaked the runtime. We knew it was going to be too long. We didn't know if it they was going to be. They a didn't leak movie. the runtime. They just J- listed it. James Cameron put that on the table and was like, "Hey, isn't this cool? I get to do whatever I want." He told you because of the runtime, you couldn't take leaks. <laughs> <laughs> True. And the question just was, okay, it's definitely going to be too long. Is it going to have an okay story? And it did have an okay story. This is an okay movie that I texted uh, Avatar heads in my life after, and I was like, saw an Avatar movie, and I will tell you that I liked it. So you saw the first one. I came to the realization, so I'm famously an Avatar disrespecter. I did not see the first Same. one. Would not have seen this one had it not been nominated for Best Picture. We, as professionals, commit to seeing all of the best pictures, uh, which meant that I had to see Avatar. It did not mean that I had to see Avatar number one. I went on YouTube, and I watched a 12-minute video, got really caught up on Avatar, gave me everything I needed to know, went into this one. Yeah, it was fine. You uh, still were more prepared than I was then, because when I went in, I didn't remember anything. My experience watching Avatar 1 was an allergy-ridden disaster watching on an outdoor screen in the spring, and it was just a horrible time. And I think I ended up trying to go back and watch the movie uh, again. What this is all to say is neither of us were excited for this movie. Neither of us were drawn to this movie. Uh, I was. I, I wouldn't say that I was. I was. I was not excited. I was also dreading it. I was dreading seeing this movie. Uh, I dislike how smug James Cameron is. Famously not a fan of that guy. Uh, I know that he's really good at his job, but boy, tone it down a little bit, pal. Uh, and then number two, the runtime. Number three, just doesn't really interest it, interest me. Everybody being like, "Ooh, the uh, the the special effects." You have to really like r- slap me in the face with special effects. It's 2023. You can't win me over with special effects at this point. You have to really bring it home. Uh, I think that by the sounds of it and by like the recap that I got, this movie does a better job of bringing in um, story factors that aren't totally cliche and redone uh, over and over and over again. This one I kind of enjoyed as it got as it went along. Although this movie kind of just was like animated hook at the end. <laughs> True. Yeah. He's like, Peter, I've got your kids. Yeah. I mean, they don't do anything like crazy special, but it's a it becomes a fun action movie in the last act. Yeah, um, you mentioned the special effects and how that isn't enough to win you a best picture. I totally agree. I had that in my notes where the baseline in 2023 is too high or 2022 when this movie came out. If you come out with something and Avatar 1 came out in 2009 and it blew a lot of people's minds. But I even remember back then, I was like, we live in a world where like graphics are a thing. Right. Where as video games come out, you're blown away. And they were still making like pretty big leaps from year to year in the early noughties, we'll say. But now, everything looks so good that if this is 3% better than everything else, I'm not going to notice it. Right, and I don't understand like the technical... I don't understand like the deep technical aspects of how the movies are made and how the sausage is made, where like I know a lot of movie nerds are like, yeah, but he does this and he does this and... And, like, that's what makes it so cool. And, and, like, it does look amazing. It looks amazing, this movie. And I know that, like, the actors and the motion cap is really in-depth. Like, they trained underwater like crazy. So I do give them credit for that. 
but you have to go a lot further, especially when you're talking about a Best Picture nomination. This movie has the second lowest Rotten Tomatoes score of all the Best Picture nominees. The top seven are all over 90, but the bottom three is Elvis at 77%, Avatar at 76%, and Triangle of Sadness at 72%. I love Triangle of Sadness, Mm -hmm. uh, but I do think it deserves an approval rating in the 70s. I like Avatar, The Way of Water, just fine. And I think it deserves an approval rating in the 70s. I could see how in the case of Triangle of Sadness, definitely I could see how people would say, no, flawed, didn't like it, bad movie. And certainly not a movie for everybody. Right. And in the case of Avatar, I could see people being turned off by the length or not totally being blown away by any of the stories. I think that I liked that a in a three hour and 12 minute movie that is a sequel to something to which I'm not super invested I was able to follow along and I was never really particularly confused. It was pretty like good guys versus bad guys. Bad guys come in, try to get the good guys back, try to take their land away from them. Yeah. Yeah. I I would say it's simple enough. There's a lot of moving parts in it. Like for me, who's not really in that world at all, it it was easy enough to follow. Like a lot of characters you have to keep track of mm-hmm. and and it's difficult to differentiate them if you're not paying like super close attention um but outside of that like i would say the first two acts moved kind of slow and i wasn't particularly interested in the second act where it was just like them fooling around on an island and and like cohabitating with the locals like that was I was just like, this is way too long. I like long. the riding the fish thing. I like that. They but they did that for like fish. 45 minutes. They did that, that far too long. And uh, like I said, the third act is really, it's it's pretty strong. Like the action sequences in the, that third act are very cool. So I like the reef people, but they play a pretty mean trick on Loak. They do the Happy Gilmore ninth green at nine trick mm-hmm. to him, except it's... They take him into a predator's waters and leave him there to die. Like as a classic goof. goof. As a prank. (laughs) And this is after their dad is like, yo, our only rule is like, no matter what, we ain't the killing type. I'm like, why don't you check what your kids are up to? Because I'm pretty sure, I don't know what your laws are like around here. They at least get charged with something for that. Impractical Jokers has been on TV for like 22 seasons, and they've never left somebody out there to die. This is set very far in the future, though, so I don't Ooh, know if they ever watched that classic TV. This what, is, if, what if they just cut away to like the Impractical Jokers, and they were like, season 4,000, hell yeah, we got them. Think of all of the things that have already happened by the time Avatar is happening. Avatar, I believe, takes place in like, 2154 yeah it's not that far ahead of time but like the purge has already happened true so like they've they've known what the purge is i mean ai is taking over already so like a hundred years from now yeah a lot of stuff could happen uh i have two sonic notes one is that i love the sound the navi make when they're mad (laughs) they just hiss like cats it's great (laughs) when spider does it to his old man Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. Yeah. He's like, yeah. what, you, you toss me a couple of pieces of taffy and you think I'm going to be cool with you? <laughs> it's to- way funnier when, like, the humans do it, or the aliens, I guess. The humans are the aliens now. Yeah. Uh, it's way funnier when the humans do it because they don't have the fangs. Mm. So it's they just... <laughs> Yeah, but I mean that that kid says it with his chest, man. He sure but, does. Like, I, I like Spider. He, Spider's a good kid. He thinks that he's, he's a Navi. I mean, he's Buddy the Elf. Right, pretty much, yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's got that cool mask, though. Uh, the other Sonic note I have is, what is Jemaine Clement's accent supposed to be? Because he is basically, I think, it's like the an American person, if their jaw is closed and clenched the whole time, could you make out a single word he said? Every time he talked, I was like, oh, hi, oh I'm a scientist. I mean, I could make out words that he was saying, but it was like it was like he was kind of like trying to force them out through like a wired shut jaw. Yeah, like is there, and I mean, the, the, the I was going to say the late, but the, the canceled uh, yay, as it were. Mm-hmm. Uh, his, through the wire, famously, he was, he was easier to understand than that. And granted, we're, Talking about like a world class musician, although uh, Jermaine, same world class no, musician, uh, no no slouch in his own right musically. You ever see Moana? 
He crushed it in that. No, but I've seen Disney on Ice, and they were playing some of his tunes, yeah. and I didn't know that he was part of that, and I was like, oh, this is uh, Jermaine. Flight of the Concords. What a, a television my, program. My favorite part of this movie, Dead Serious, was the, the poachers. Mm. Uh, him and the other guy. Uh, both of them, I, I would watch like a full movie with them like just buddy copping around, causing a lot of trouble. You know what those guys were, though? What? I mean, so th there's a lot of like, uh, so the 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 captain or whatever of the RDA guy, mm -hmm. he's Hook from Hook. Spider is Buddy the Elf mm -hmm. from Elf. <laughs> yeah. And these two guys are just Jurassic Park characters. Yeah, right. Guys that are there yeah. because at some point dinosaurs are going to start eating people. Yeah. And I got to want the dinosaur to eat some of the people. Most of the time you're like, um, that's a bummer. I don't want that person to die. Those people are just chum. Exactly. Like we talk about uh, Best Picture Chum, these are Avatar Chum. Great transition. Pete Chaboy did some nerdy homework here. Do you think that Avatar is Best Picture Chum? No, probably not, because it's fucking James Cameron, and he'll find a way to strong arm himself into like l legitimate uh, Best Picture qualification. Okay. This is a massive, massive favorite to win best visual effects. Yes. No Minus 4,000. And I would hope, sincerely, I would hope that this wins <laughs> best visual effects because what did I sit through <laughs> yeah. otherwise? Uh, Minus 4,000 according to Vegas Insider. Long shots for the other awards, but let's talk about its best picture candidacy where it is plus 5,000, which is the third worst odds. That would put it in chum category. It would put it in chum category. This is one of three best picture noms this year that is not also nominated for an acting award or best director. The others are Top Gun Maverick and All Quiet on the Western Front. All Quiet on the Western Front, by the way, currently, according to Vegas Insider, has jumped up to the third best betting odds. I went back through every year of the Academy Awards. Wow. Since they started keeping... Four acting awards in 1937, the ninth Academy Awards, every Best Picture winner has also been nominated for at least one acting award and or Best Director. The last six Best Picture winners also took home trophies in one of those categories. The closest there has been to a movie to win Best Picture without being nominated in those other categories is Argo in 2013, which only got a Best Supporting Actor category, but the argument could be made... But it got you could, director as well. No, you could toss a, an asterisk Wait. on there. It didn't. It was not nominated for Best Director. Oh, I thought it was. But you could toss an asterisk on there because you could argue it's the Academy and Ben Affleck, and there's... Ben Affleck has not spoken glowingly of <laughs> that whole experience. But that's all to say... like. It came, they came close one time to one of the Best Picture ones just kind of being there for Best Picture. These three movies, All Quiet, Avatar, and Top Gun, they have, they're nominated in other categories, but they are not nominated for Best Director or Acting categories. And those, historically, have always accompanied the Best Picture winner. That's interesting. That is a very, uh, very good research by Thir you. Yeah, very thorough, thorough research. Mm. Um, and now that um, that almost makes uh, all quiet even more impressive in the, in its jump. I mean, I mean, I don't know when I wanted to announce this, but I I've taken all quiet off my board. What you, in in terms of what betting? Oh, like in terms of like don't touch it. I wouldn't. I would not place a bit personally. Not not gambling advice or whatever, but. I'm not going to bet on All Quiet on the Western Front to win. I would be quite happy if it won because I love that movie. It's a great movie. And I think that it's interesting that it has leapfrogged the likes of Top Gun Maverick and Elvis. But yeah, like I'm I'm not going to – I wouldn't bet on Top Gun. I think anyway, neither of us would have bet on Avatar. But this is something that I came across while doing prep for Top Gun, thinking about – this isn't the type of movie that wins Best Picture. And then I was like, oh, well, it's not nominated for these things. And then just cross-reference it with these other ones. And yeah, I that's all to say in the case of Avatar, 
I don't think don't it's going it. to win no, Best Picture. No. I mean, anyway. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it really only excels in one category, and that's visual effects. Yeah, it looks it, good. And, I mean, again, I, I give it a gold star for me being able to understand it and follow along because I was honestly worried that I was just going to be lost in the movie theater choking on popcorn for three hours and 12 minutes. What was your favorite part? Uh, if anything stands out, it's the... It's Spider hissing at his dad. <laughs> okay. I like... Um, Being like, fuck off. It's first chance I get. I'm leaving you. I like the whales. I know that I wasn't supposed to call them the whales because James Cameron told me not to call them the whales, oh, that's but that's right. why I'm calling them the whales. Ah, uh, interesting. I like the whales. The whales are cool. You I know. thought they were great. Um, I also would be re- remiss if I didn't mention that Edie Falco is in this movie. Uh, and Her voice changes, by the way. Does it? Yeah, in the beginning, she's doing one accent, okay. and later she's doing another accent. I'm like, man, they only cared about visuals in this movie. Yeah, I mean, like, she didn't sell me on being the general in this movie. Uh, and she, I, I also love the fact that she forgot that she was in this movie and thought that it had already come out like three years ago and thought that it flopped. Yes, I forgot that's about one that. Of the, that's one of the best stories of the year in, in movies is that she thought this movie came out pre-pandemic and that it just flopped. And then it came out this year and she was like, oh, huh. Well, the good news for you is you won't have to see another Avatar movie too soon. Just kidding. The third one's coming out next year. Oh, my God. Yeah. And then there's, and, and that's probably going to be nominated for Best Picture. And there's only two more after that, too. There's four sequels coming. James Cameron, man. This does not need four sequels. How do you know? You haven't seen them. <laughs> Doesn't need them. You haven't seen them. We'll, we'll see. The story is not that good. It really isn't. It's not that good. We don't need more.